today I am excited because I am going to be sharing several inexpensive, brand new home decor DIYs for your home. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I love sharing high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget. I believe in creating a beautiful home yourself. And if you enjoy videos like this, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. As I mentioned, I'll be sharing several home decor DIYs in this video. I'll be using some different mediums and I'll be sharing some dollar store DIYs as well as some DIYs for your tablescapes. And you all know that I have been painting more recently and I have another painting DIY in this one. Before I get started, I want to thank my sponsor for this video, which is Cricut. I'll be sharing different ways that you can use your machine to create these beautiful DIYs. Okay, let's get started. So for this first DIY, I'm going to be using this little plank round plaque. It's actually from Plaid, and I believe you can find it online as well as your local craft stores. If I do find it online, I'll link it in the description box below. Now there are many options that you can take. You can very well paint this, but I decided to go ahead and stain it. And what I'm using is my Rust-Oleum Aged Glaze, which I use for a lot of different projects and I always have linked in my description box. And what I'm also using to stain it is an old kid's sock. This hack is something I use every time I need to stain something. A lot of times our children grow out of socks or they mess them up and I decide to use them one last time before throwing them out. Once I'm done staining it, I am going to put it aside to dry and I am going to head over to Cricut Design Space. Now there are many ways you can do this. If you're a great artist, you can definitely handwrite this yourself, but I do find it easy to head over to my design space, create some beautiful words in a nice font and just add it on to my sign. I wanted to create a welcome sign, however, instead of doing an English version like I did in my previous video, I'll go ahead and link to that one if you guys haven't seen how I made that one. I decided to go ahead and do a Spanish version using the word bienvenidos. Now both the English welcome decal as well as the bienvenidos decal will be available on my online shop and I'll make sure to link it in the description box below. So what I usually like to do when creating a simple sign like this is after I create my word and decide on the font, I like to ungroup the letters and then pick the very first letter and make it a little bit larger than the rest before grouping the word back together. Once I'm happy with the design and the size, I send it over to my Cricut machine. Then I select the type of vinyl that I am going to be cutting it on. I make sure to only cut the amount of vinyl that I am going to need for a specific project. That way I use as little vinyl as possible. Once it's on my mat, I feed it through the machine. And then once the little Cricut symbol flashes on your machine, just hit that little button and let it do its work. On your Cricut design space, you will see the percentage going up to 100 to let you know when the job is done. Then simply click on the flashing button to remove your mat. Then I remove the excess vinyl and proceed to weed out the small little pieces in between the letters. Next, I add on my transfer tape, making sure it picks up all of the letters, and then I add it on to my board. I wanted to add a bow, and I had a little bit of this black ticking stripe ribbon that was on a very light cream colored fabric and I wanted to go ahead and use it all up. So I decided to make my very simple bow that I make for all of my wreaths. Now, if you have an Instagram account, I would love for you guys to follow me there at the Latina next door. I share a lot of behind the scenes and I chit chat with you guys on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. 
Now for the two tails, I like to wrap an individual piece of ribbon to the center. And what I like to do is I glue the front ribbon back over behind the ribbon, as you see here, and then I bring it back down. That way it looks like it's completely wrapped around it without having it turn around and therefore you seeing its backside on the front. Then the top ribbon, I turn it like this and then glue it down so that again, you see the finished side of the ribbon on the front. I hope that makes sense. Next, I decided to glue it kind of off center towards the left and I glued it down. I end up cutting the ribbon a little bit more on the bottom so that it doesn't cover up my word. And then using some of my leftover Dollar Tree floral stash, I decided to add some flowers to the top of it as well. Now, I need a flat bottom in order to adhere these on to my little sign, so I have to glue the petals to each other before removing the bottom little piece that holds each bud together. I have recently bought a few more flowers, but I decided I wanted to use what I had so I can move on and start using some of my new florals. I decided to use three white, and four peachy orange flowers for this and I added the white one to the center and I flanked it along with my peachy colored ones along with another white one on either side. I wanted to add a little bit of green, but I didn't want to use any leaves and I found this little sprig of green hydrangea, so I decided to cut it apart and add it in a couple of places. Okay, so for this next DIY, we're going to be using these little tea towels from a Dollar Tree. Now, I've had these for a little while, but I do know they come out with several different types seasonally, and you might be able to find some really nice colors right now in your stores. But I thought these would be great in order to make some really nice napkins for my dinnerware. So I decided to cut the portion with the design off and only use the part with the stripes, leaving almost a perfect square. Now, even though you may cut these exactly at the same place, you might find that these aren't going to be exactly the same size, but it's totally fine. You won't even notice it when you fold them. So the next thing I did was just give it a nice hem on the edge that I just cut. And I basically did the exact same hem that it already had on the other three sides. So you would never even know that this used to be a tea towel. And you can definitely leave it here. However, I wanted to give it a more upscale and customized look. So I decided to create a nice little image on this towel and what I did was I uploaded this laurel wreath design onto my Cricut design space. Now after uploading it all I wanted to do was cut it so I just picked the cut image and after that I imported it into my Cricut design space. I reduced it to the size that I needed it. I added a P for the center in order to add a little bit of a monogram and after choosing my font I was done with the design. I sent it over to get cut, and this time I selected stencil vinyl. And when you create a stencil, when you go to weed out your design, you weed out the actual design and not the remainder of the vinyl, if that makes sense. Now 
Once you're done weeding, you add your vinyl transfer tape. Then remove it from the backing and then place it exactly where you want your stencil to go. Now for this, you wanna make sure you either use a fabric paint or you can always add a fabric medium onto your acrylic paints and once you mix it up, the paint turns safe in order to apply to fabric and you'll be able to wash it like fabric and it shouldn't cause any kind of fading and your design should stay in place. Now the stencil vinyl is usually for a one-time application. However, if you're using something for a pattern that you're gonna be using right away repeatedly, you can definitely peel it from where it's at and apply it to another napkin just like I did here and it was perfectly fine. Both applied very well. And like with any stencil, you wanna make sure your brush is not oversaturated with paint so that it doesn't bleed through the rest of the fabric and you want to add on gradually as you go. And next, you just want to peel off your stencil as soon as you're done painting. Let it dry adequately and you're finished. These napkins pair beautifully with my DIY raffia napkin rings that I created. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll make sure to link to it in the description box below because they are super easy to make and really inexpensive. So for this next DIY, it's going to be something else for your tablescape, but I'm pretty sure you haven't seen this, so stick with me. What you're going to need is some really thick fabric and I happen to have some of this really thick, it's kind of like a burlap, almost a canvas style fabric and these are actually ribbon and I cut these down to size. Now you can use whatever kind of fabric you want but you got to make sure it holds its shape. You don't want it to be too flimsy for this. You're gonna fold this over onto itself. So make sure that those two ends that are folded over are both hemmed. Now once the hems are sewn, you're gonna to wanna to fold it onto itself with the right side in, and then you're going to sew both sides, creating a little pocket. Now you're gonna see me sew this in a little bit because it was actually a little bit wider than what I needed. And you can always sew both ends to be even, one to be longer than the other, because you'll see what I'm gonna use this for. Now once my little pockets were done, I wanted to add a ticking stripe pattern to this piece. So what I did was I created my own pattern on my Cricut Design Space. I used some shapes in order to create my ticking pattern. So I basically duplicated the rectangle, made it skinnier, then once I had the thickness I wanted, I duplicated that. Then I came back and created another rectangle and I put it above the original design and then what I did I selected everything and then I hit slice I removed the top layer and there's my stencil now you can definitely use tape and tape off any section that you want to create ticking stripes on any medium however I wanted to share how easily it is to create your own stencil design with simple shapes in Cricut design space I weeded my stencil, added the transfer vinyl tape, and then I applied it to my little pocket. I removed my vinyl transfer tape and began to paint my ticking stripes in. And as you can see here, I did reuse this stencil as well. And if you find that it's not staying in place, if you're using fabric, you can always tape the top end and the bottom end to keep it in place and it will do perfectly fine. 
Next, I took some of this cotton twine, which is actually available at Dollar Tree now. They have these bigger, thicker spools, and I threaded it on an embroidery needle. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these cute little plaques that you see right here for name tags. Now, these I actually found online because I don't find them anymore in craft stores. I recently visited one and they're no longer carrying them. So I'll go ahead and link to them in the description box below if you're looking for something similar. And what I did was I came in from the inside and just inserted the needle through the little hoop that you see on the right side and looped it twice into the fabric and it was completely secure. This string is actually very thick, so you don't need to do it over and over again. And then in the back, I just tied it into a knot. And then I just repeated the same process for the rest of the little name tags. Now you can always hand write and hand cut some cardstock and insert it into the little label holders. However, I want to show you how to do that with your Cricut Design Space as well, in case you've been wondering how to make this. So once I found out the size that I needed, I just took a basic square shape and made it into a small rectangle. I then typed out the word that I wanted to put inside the little holder. Now you can use actual names. I'm just using mommy and puppy as an example for this. After I was happy with it, I reduced it to its actual size and then I changed it from cut to pen because I'm actually gonna use my Cricut to write this. Now, after you created your design, you want to make sure you select the color and change it to white. Now, make sure that your words are set to pen and your shape is set to cut. Select it completely and then hit attach. Send it to your Cricut Maker. Select cardstock. And make sure there's a pen in the pen slot in your Cricut machine. Insert your mat and let it do its thing. Make sure to remove your pen when you're done. Then take out the individual labels, insert them into your placeholders, and here is your final result. Now these utensil holders slash name place holders go so well with my faux galvanized chargers and if you haven't seen that DIY I'll make sure to link to it so you can find out how you can make anything look galvanized. And while I used colors and designs for a farmhouse look you can always customize this to suit your style and color scheme. And while we're on the subject of food, I thought I'd do something really fun and really inexpensive. Now I had this piece from Dollar Tree and as you can see, I removed that little white frame that was stuck onto it. I wasn't really fond of the center design, so I decided to give it a quick makeover to make it a little bit more nice and practical. I removed some of the glue that was holding the frame onto it and then I placed it back a little bit more centered than it was before because when it was originally placed on the frame it was a little crooked. Now as you saw I traced the inside of the frame and the reason I did this was because I wanted to paint the center portion with black chalk paint because I'm going to make a little chalkboard out of this. But I wanted to make sure I didn't go too far outside the lines because I actually like the buffalo check print pattern on this. And honestly, all you need is one coat of paint for this. The Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in Black is very thick and you only need one coat. But I made sure to do long, even strokes from top to bottom so I didn't have a lot of streaking 
when my final chalkboard was painted. After the chalk paint was dry, I added some hot glue to the original white frame and I attached it back. I created a small menu decal and then I placed it on my little chalkboard. For my final DIY for this video, I am really excited about it because it's another painting and I really think you guys are going to really love it. And now I bought this frame over at Michael's and it's kind of like a little easel so you get two frames in one. It was originally like $12 and I had it at 40% off because it was on sale but I got two so it was kind of like getting two completed frames for $3.50 a piece which I still think was a good deal. So for this piece, I'm actually going to be painting only one side of it for now, and I'll probably do another thing on the other side in a future video. So the first thing I did was take my painter's tape roll. I needed something round because if you might not guess, I'm going to create a wreath on this and I needed a nice circle. So I thought this was a perfect size. So all I did was take a white paint marker and just trace the entire roll around to get a nice crisp line. Sometimes it takes a little bit of inspiration for us to create something beautiful. And I like to take inspiration from things that I already see created. This piece is inspired by a painting that I saw at Hobby Lobby and I thought I would give it a try. Now I'm just using a simple chalk paint. This color is Linen by Folk Art and I'm using a small brush in order to create different shapes of flowers. Now I am very limited in my knowledge of flowers so if you're asking what type of flowers I'm making I really have no idea. So I am just going with what I remember seeing and trying to replicate it here. And not only did I use small artist brushes, but I also used little Q-tip tips in order to make some of the shapes that I needed for the florals. Now after I thought I had a good amount of flowers on here, I started on my next layer and I just took some simple white chalk paint and I applied it on top of what I had already created. Now the goal is not to completely cover the bottom color, but more so to add depth and create layers. And you can definitely see this by looking at the ones with white on top versus the ones that just have the original color. After completing my second layer of painting, I took a look at the wreath and I found a couple of spaces that could use a little bit more florals to fill in some gaps. So that's what I did. Now after I was happy with the amount of flowers, I came in with my third color which was a very light green and I started to add greenery throughout.
and then I added some details to the centers of the flowers using a variation of the black and linen to add even more depth. In the end, I thought the center of the wreath was a little bit empty, so I decided to do a very small and delicate decal in the word bloom. And here is how this piece turned out. I am really happy with the way this turned out. I'm loving these florals and I cannot wait to experiment doing even more. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It does help my channel. Also, let me know in the description box below which one of these DIYs was your favorite. I'd like to thank Cricut for sponsoring this video and I hope to see you guys in the next home decor and DIY video next week. Until then, adios.